My name's Sue Curl. I'm a geriatrician in northern Sydney and southern New South Wales. I work particularly in the community, which means doing quite a lot of work with frail older people and particularly older people with dementia. In my 35 plus years of working as a geriatrician, I've really touched on a lot of areas um, of health practice and policy. Initially, I was very involved in bringing elder abuse to public attention and particularly to the attention of, of health professionals. We did a lot of work in that area in the late 80s and early 90s and it's very pleasing now to see that elder abuse is accepted as a problem. We haven't solved it by any means but we have a number of solutions that are in place. After elder abuse I got very involved in hip protectors and hip fractures and in fact that was the area of my PhD was whether you could prevent hip fractures by wearing specialised underwear basically with protective shields over the hips and what we spent a lot of time uh, working on um, was getting a, a hip protector underwear that was suitable for older people, particularly older women, to wear. We did discover that if you wear hip protectors and you fall over, it is very unlikely you will fracture your hip. The biggest problem is a lot of older people don't want to wear hip protectors. I then moved on to falls and frailty. And we know that frailty, which is I guess best described as age-related loss of function, it underpins falls, it underpins people needing to come into hospital and becoming very deconditioned in hospital. And I think frailty is responsible for a large number of the admissions that we see into our acute hospitals because people can no longer manage to live independently because they lose strength and function. The last area that I think is very important is the area of geriatric outreach services. So these are services that are specifically designed to work from the hospital, reaching out into the community. We started by looking at residential care facilities because we were not looking after residents who came in from those facilities well. They came into hospital and they would have falls, they would develop pressure areas. It was really not good care because we weren't able to provide that care. We realised we needed a better model of delivering care and provided that within the residential care facility itself or more recently we've been doing a lot of work with older people in their homes. So doing home visits and providing the services there. So the GRACE model of care, GRACE stands for Geriatric Rapid Acute Care Evaluation. That model of care is the, the model that was designed at Hornsby Hospital for nursing home outreach. So originally we were just going out to nursing homes from the hospital to help residents stay in their nursing home, to help staff in the nursing home manage those patients well and to work with general practitioners to provide the best possible care for the older person in their own environment rather than in hospital. More recently we've started also seeing older people in their own homes and providing them the support there. It's a really good model of care because older people want to stay in their own homes. We know that hospitals are dangerous and unfriendly places for older people. So if we can provide the care in the community, in their own homes, it's much better for them. It was successful because we co-designed it with general practitioners who provide most care for older people, with the staff in nursing home facilities and with older people themselves. We had a number of older people 
on our steering committee to help us design that model of care. So it's what older people want, not just what we as health professionals think is best. It has been taken up all over Australia, which is really nice. Um, they say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery and it is really good to see the model working well in many different settings across Australia. Grace was successful for a number of reasons. Co-designing it with GPs and residential care facilities was a really good way to start, but we also had a very detailed communications program. We had newsletters and we had academic detailing by one of our involved GPs who went out and spoke to other general practices about the benefits of the GRACE program. We also showed over a 12 month period from August 2005 when we started the program that we reduced the number of older people coming into the emergency department and we also reduced the number of bed nights used by older people from aged care facilities in the hospital significantly from about 600 per month to 200 per month. It was a very significant difference and the care was provided to the older person in their own facility, which many saw as their own home, rather than in the very foreign and unfamiliar environment of the hospital. So once again, can you join me in thanking Professor Curl? It really was an amazing feeling to be the recipient of the 2022 Sydney Sachs Award. When I looked back at the list of previous recipients, I felt pretty amazed that um, I was joining them. Um, they were people who had made big changes in health policy and led some really important work in, um, in health. So for me, it was just a, a wonderful feeling, but I do need to note that it should have been a team award because I can only achieve what I have done because I work with a really, really great group of people. Mm -hmm.